1994, a private corporation launched a probe into space that contained a living chimpanzee. The chimpanzee was to live its life transmitting data on the physical effects of prolonged space travel. The following year, the corporation responsible was dissolved. All records were destroyed. In the year 2020, an individual was enjoying the game Othello on his computer when he discovered that his opponent was a chimpanzee traveling through the far reaches of space. To keep the chimpanzee from falling into despair, the individual needed to convince the creature that there were far greater things in the universe than just itself. You heard the announcer. There is a chimpanzee that has been exploring the heavens in a metal box since 1994, and it needs something greater than itself, the vast void through which it travels and the metal box in which it travels, to believe in. To give the poor creature something greater to believe in, I am going to beat it by scoring 50 points or more at every game of Othello that we play. Okay, now I would like to introduce you to my co-host, this handsome fellow in the lower right corner is the Cockroach Valentine. When I'm about to make a mistake, the Cockroach Valentine will warn me, and in that way, I not only can't lose, I will win by scoring 50 points or more. Thank you for being here, Valentine. <laughs> Look at him playing it cool. You are the king of composure, Valentine. No arguments there. Here's how you play Othello. The objective is to surround their dots with your dots, making their dots your dots. Monkey is the white dots, you are the black dots. Monkey will place a dot here. Three straight lines are created between the new white dot and the pre-existing white dots. The black dots between monkey's dots, now become white dots. Monkey wins. If you cannot make a move you forfeit a turn. When no one can make a move the game ends. The person or monkey with the most dots is the winner. Because of all records having been destroyed, we are going to create our own images of Monkey the Chimp. These images are being created and sent to us by artists from around the globe. Let's welcome our first artist. Nice! This one comes from Scott Bateman of Beacon, New York. Scott is a filmmaker and animator, and this image is very much in keeping with the fine work of his that I have seen. Thank you so much for being a part of this, Scott. All right, let's build up this monkey by hurting its pride. Round one. Here we go. The game begins. We are two to two and toe to toe. I move first. Bang. Three to three. Let's try to keep this left side. Oop, I didn't see that corner. If I take this row, it sets a trap. He'll be able to get this corner from me. So, Valentine, I hope you don't mind. I have to ask you. I have been thinking about insects throughout history and in popular culture, and I started thinking about Jiminy Cricket, how he used to follow Pinocchio around and tell him when he was being a jackass. <laughs> and he was kind of a narc, but at the same time complicit in the wrongdoings of others. Do insects talk about that guy much? Are you getting mad? Are, are you getting mad? I'm just asking. Look, if you get mad at me, I'm going to get mad at you because that's just how I'm built, so... corner oh god look at that I think we lost our boy hey Valentine I, I'm sorry Valentine I really would <laughs> you were just kidding us oh man you had me going there Valentine I'd never seen you look that angry before I'm glad you were just joking because I don't know what I'd do without you I really don't you made me sweat <laughs> don't do that again please Look at that, 52 to 12, reached our goal of 50 points plus two, while the chimp leaves a messy monkey mark a zero in the... <laughs> wow, did you see that? That was the love alert. It goes off to let us know when one of our viewers has fallen in love with someone. Not someone on our show, though it's hard not to fall in love with the cockroach valentine. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. It means someone out there has fallen in love with someone in their own world. Maybe more than one person has fallen in love. I don't know. When I installed the love alert, I 
never looked at the instructions. There's just, there's, there's too many things. So in the light of this fantastic news, I think love should be the topic of this episode. But right now, let's welcome our next artist. Ah, look at that, a planetary passerby with a look of love and longing in his or her eye. This one comes from our friend Patrick Corrigan of Bath, Maine. Patrick has been working with the Red Planet Planning Commission. He's been scouting out natural and conservation cemeteries throughout the state of Maine for possible inclusion in our Monarch Butterfly Restoration Program. Thank you for doing that, Patrick, and thank you for this sweet, kind portrait of Monkey the Chimp. If you would like to send us your own artwork of Monkey the Chimp, please email it to redplanetplanningcommission at gmail.com. Write monkey in the subject heading, let us know where you live and a little bit about yourself, and we will show it in the order in which it was received, provided it is not mean. Spirited. And the more I look at this monkey picture, the more it melts my heart, Patrick. And I know chimpanzees aren't monkeys... It's just a name. We talked all about that in episode one, but this is episode two, and this is round two, so let's play. Round two. Speaking of love, I went to the laundromat the other day to do my laundry, and as I approached, I saw sitting on a stoop in a doorway two teenagers who were in love. As I approached, I could only see her, and she was a beautiful young lady because a long chain of genetic combinations had worked to her favor and the culmination had reached its peak at that very moment. She was sitting in front of a young man, and he wasn't a bad-looking kid either. He was wearing a hoodie. I'd say he was visually her equivalent. She was mesmerized by him as she gently touched his face with her fingers. That's all they were doing, just sitting there, and she was touching his face. The look on his face was dead serious, but his eyes were euphoric. As far as this young couple was concerned, the entire world had disappeared before they were born. When I returned to the laundromat 42 minutes later, they had gone. A well-dressed man was standing in their place speaking on his phone. I said, get out of that doorway. That is a sacred spot. Love has happened there. If I take that upper corner, Monkey will take the whole row, so I have to leave that one wide open. Now, whatever happens to that young couple from this point forward doesn't matter. Maybe she'll get pregnant from touching his face too much, and they'll end up suing each other. It doesn't matter. What matters is the energy that they created helps to perpetuate the universe. Love is the energy that the universe runs on, and all of us are the batteries. If you understand love, you understand dark matter. You can draw up the most complex math equations that money can buy to explain dark matter, but the answer is the number two. You can make alternative universes out of ones and zeros, but two, that's the ticket. According to Big Bang theorists, it took two nothings to touch in a place where there was no space to create everything. If that's not a love story, I don't know what is. Big Bang, 60 to 4. That is pretty good. It would probably be wise to stop here and let the monkey stew over its amazing defeat. But maybe we should try to kick its butt a little harder. That would put it right out. And now a word from our sponsor. The sponsor is you. Please support this project at patreon.com slash smallest star. And let's not forget our producers, the Red Planet Planning Commission. Go to redplanetplanningcommission.com, show your support, and look around. There are new ideas waiting for you at that website, so go find them. And if you enjoy this program, please hit like or subscribe. <laughs> of course you like it, Valentine. <laughs> Uh, Life would be a lot less interesting without you, my friend. (laughs) Valentine. Before we begin round three, let's introduce our third artist. (laughs) Will you look at that? That is beautiful. This one comes from Romina Carrara of Rosario, Argentina. I love her work. I know her animation, her wonderful book. I've seen images from her gallery openings. She has a super interesting eye. (laughs) It's an absolute honor to have your work as part of our show. Thank you so much, Romina. Round three. 
So to cap off our conversation, love is a big deal. Taking that into consideration, why on earth didn't the corporation that sent our friend the chimpanzee into space take that into consideration? If I take what's in front of the corner, he'll take the corner, so I have to leave it. If they made love part of their process, the information that they gathered might have been worth something. Chimpanzees feel love, know love, and generate love. They are part of the battery. Just as an example, mother chimpanzees will typically nurse their young until they are about three years old. That is love. If you don't think so, try nursing a three-year-old chimpanzee. I promise you that it is not as much fun as it sounds, and I was so happy when I woke up to find out that it was all just a dream. Which reminds me, knock knock. Who is there? Prince... somebody. Prince somebody who? No, I mean, I don't know the guy's name. I can't grab that or he'll take that corner and turn everything over. Anyway, I dreamed I kissed him. I don't know anything about him, really. Corn oh God, I left that wide open. Anyway, instead of taking love into consideration, the company that sent our chimp into space folded. Oh no, he took the corner, or she took the corner. The best I can do is secure the top. The company burned all their records, so me and Valentine are working from practically nothing. Keep the bottom row going. Get the corner. Oh no, that red zit is not going to go away. Let's get up into here and... No, I don't want to set her up. She can take me. Let's try to break down this top. No! It's getting pretty bright in here, Valentine. Corner and... Oh, God! Look at that. 43 to 21. We have failed our goal by seven points, my friend. Just look at that piece of real estate he's got up there in the right corner. That's... That's pretty solid. He or she must be feeling pretty good about that. What do you think, Valentine? What? No, I heard what you said. I'm just not sure why you would say that. You and I are very different, Valentine, and we don't always agree. If it weren't for this job, you and I probably would never speak. And it's for that reason that I am so grateful to have this job. And we're doing good work. We're trying to keep a chimpanzee from feeling too good about itself so it might feel better about the universe. I don't think I could do any of this without you, and I wouldn't want to. All right. Dream about your low-level victory, little monkey. Me and the Valentine will kick you off your low-level high horse next time, okay? Good night, monkey. Go to sleep, little monkey. Close your eyes and dream. Nothing is ever as bad or as good as it seems. Red Planet Planning Commission.com